Hey everyone, today we are gonna be talking about makeup that you absolutely hated. I asked you guys over on my community tab, what products do you hate? And not just any product, but I narrowed it down to viral products. And I feel like that adds a little something different to this topic because I think when it comes to viral makeup, it's something that everybody is so excited about on YouTube and TikTok, and it can be an even bigger letdown when you get it home and realize that it doesn't work for you or that you don't like it. So I wanted to focus on the most hyped up and viral products. And I ended up getting over 500 responses, so I. I figured, you know what, let me break this up into drugstore and high-end. So today we're gonna to be focusing on viral drugstore products that you hated. And if you'd like to see a part two and I'll do all of the high-end ones, be sure to let me know. I'm actually gonna be trying on all of these products in today's video. And I have to say there are some that I feel like are a little controversial because they're products that I really like, especially towards the end of the video. So I'd love to hear if you guys all feel the same way down in the comments. And also if you're new here, Hi, my name is Jen. I do a lot of makeup reviews here on this channel. I do focus quite a bit on drugstore makeup and saving money, but I also do talk about high-end products as well, and all of my videos are unsponsored. So if that sounds good, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. All right, so let's start out with primer, and there were two that you guys both really hated. Both were from e.l.f. actually, and um, the first one was the Halo Glow Liquid Filter, and the other one was the e.l.f. Putty Primer but this one definitely had more votes from you guys. So let's just see what you had to say. Um, the first one says the e.l.f. Halo Glow, OMG, looked so bad on my skin and broke me out. I wanted to love it so bad, but nope. Another person said the e.l.f. Halo Glow, I thought it was okay until I finally tried the real thing and OMG, is flawless filter worth every penny? The glow is so much more one with the skin and pretty as opposed to overly shiny and sitting on the skin. A lot of you also complained about the shade range saying that even the lightest shades like this one for example is fair one that they were too orange and too warm and I definitely agree with the shade range part of it I think for being the absolute lightest shade this is not light it's actually darker than my skin and I'm never the lightest shade in anything so I definitely think that the shade range needs some major work but that being said I don't actually mind this product I mean maybe it's because I have dry skin I noticed a lot of the responses were talking about it creasing or looking oily and for me that isn't an issue just because I'm so dry I feel like my skin just kind of sucks this product right in it doesn't even have time to creep it just adds a nice amount of moisture but as you can see like it's definitely darker than my skin tone I mean I do like the nice glow that it gives under makeup but I agree Charlotte Tilbury I think has a better shade range they have some that are much lighter if you have a more fair skin tone so elf really needs to work on that maybe at some point they'll come out with new shades next when it comes to foundation there were a couple of drugstore options that you really were not loving like the elf CC cream or the Maybelline and L'Oreal foundations that are in the little dropper but by far the one that you guys were the most upset about was the infallible 24-hour fresh wear foundation so many of you hated this product so um, let me just read a couple of your responses the first person said the L'Oreal infallible natural wear slash finish foundation or whichever one was in the glass bottle with the pump it sat on top of my skin but looked great on everyone else I was so disappointed that a Tati recommendation didn't work for me yet another person said L'Oreal fresh wear 24-hour foundation I felt dry and crusty and all the big beauty youtubers praised it l'oreal fresh wear makes my skin look like the surface of a cracked desert and i have oily skin wtf the l'oreal infallible fresh wear foundation looks so bad on me it looks so cakey and heavy no matter how i prep i don't get the hype and the comments on this just go on and on so um, if you want to read them it's on my community tab i'll just leave a link down below and you guys can check out all of the other comments and all the different products that people were talking about but this one really did have so many I was shocked I haven't tried this one in a couple of years so I'm excited to just see what I think of it again I don't remember whether I loved it or hated it so it probably wasn't like a super strong reaction but it also didn't make it into like my favorite foundation drawer either so I'm guessing I probably didn't love it 
Ooh, it actually has a really strong perfumey smell. I don't remember that, but I do remember everybody totally going crazy over this foundation and saying how natural it looked on the skin. And I find with anything that tends to look dry or cakey, using a very small amount of product and then also applying it with a damp sponge really seems to help. I have to say, I actually think this looks really good right now. Um, I don't know if it's something that as I wear it, it's going to get drier or, you know, start to sink into fine lines and all of that. But right now, I think it looks really fresh, really natural. It has decent coverage. I didn't use a lot, like I said, so maybe that's one of the tricks to getting this to work, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised by it. I don't remember liking it this much last time, but I do wanna let it just sit throughout the day and we'll see how it looks by the end of the night. I just wanna skip over to brows really quickly, and most of you didn't put any type of brow products that you hated, but also I don't feel like a lot of brow products have really gone viral, at least not that I can think of off the top of my head. But the one that I did get a couple of responses on is the NYX Brow Glue. So um, the first person said, NYX brow glue they neglect to mention that it's glue that never sets down my brows were sludged all over my face and then one other person just said nyx brow glue this product does not work for me but they didn't really explain why so this was another product that i bought when all the hype was going around and i used it like once or twice i don't think i was very impressed so that's why i haven't used it again but i figured i would just try it and see how it goes so this kind of like texture wise reminds me of that Anastasia brow freeze that comes in the pot. Like it's a little bit thick and goopy like that, but um, this is actually a little bit easier than brow freeze because it, it just has the wand attached and you don't have to like use that pot and then go get another spoolie brush. It just seems to make it a little bit easier. So, I mean, yeah, it does feel kind of sticky and weird, but I just want to let this sit for a few minutes before I fill in my brows and we'll see if it does in fact dry down or if it stays wet throughout the day. So let's move on to concealer. This was another one. I think you guys were sort of torn between two different drugstore formulas, the e.l.f. camo concealers, both the regular and the hydrating, and then also the Maybelline Age Rewind with the little sponge on top. But as I was counting up the responses, I think e.l.f. definitely wins here. So here I have the original camo concealer. I did have the hydrating one for a while and I'm pretty sure I tossed it because it was starting to go off. I had had it for too long, but um, I didn't really love it under my eyes, but I did use that um, as like a eyeshadow primer and it worked great for that. So um, let's see what you guys had to say about the camo concealer. The first one said the e.l.f. camo line, the CC cream and both versions of the concealer. I wanted to love them, I really did, but they made me look like the Crypt Keeper. Dry and cakey are the two words that come to mind. Definitely not for me. And then someone responded to them and said, ha, same here, I looked a decade older. I'm just putting like a dot of this on the outer corner of my eye. Um, the next person said, several products come to mind. I suppose the worst was the first e.l.f. camo concealer, this one. Goopy, gloppy mess, cracked when it finally dried. I joked about throwing it into my toolbox for future use as a wall patch spackling compound. Strangely enough, the hydrating camo concealer is one of my top three favorites. So, I mean, I think there's definitely a difference between the two. The hydrating version is by far not as drying as this one. But I also kind of wonder, cause I haven't used this in years, if I just apply a little amount like on the outer and inner corners, which is what I've been doing with concealer now for a while, if it would really be that bad. I sort of feel like when this came out years ago, people were still doing like the big triangle under their eyes. And I think if you're gonna add that much of something that's dry like this, it's gonna look cakey but I'm wondering if I use it really sparingly, if I'll like it better. I mean, it's absolutely brightening my eye area quite a bit. What shade is this? This is the shade Fair Beige. So it's a pretty light shade to begin with. It's not looking terrible at the moment. I'll zoom you guys in in just a second and we can kind of take a look at the foundation and the concealer and all of the base products. But so far it does seem to be looking okay. So I wonder if it's just because I'm not putting that much of it. I think because this formula is like so thick and rich, you really don't need a lot and it still gives amazing coverage. All right, so zoomed in, I feel like everything is looking pretty good. 
The only thing I don't like is the e.l.f. camo concealer. Um, it looks a little tiny bit crusty like on the inner corner of my eye right there. I don't know if you guys can even see on camera. It looks okay out here on this side, but in here I just feel like it looks a little bit more textured. But the foundation looks okay so far. We're just gonna have to see how it wears. Moving on to eyeshadow, a bunch of the different responses that I got were for higher end palettes, so I can't wait to talk about those in another version of this video, but when it comes to drugstore eyeshadow, again, it was e.l.f. that you guys really did not like. The first one said the e.l.f. bite size shadow quads, the quality was okay for the extremely low price, but people were comparing them to high end and needed to calm down. And another person just put it very succinctly and said e.l.f. bite size shadows suck. So I have two here that I'm gonna be using today. I think the one thing I don't love about these is that I can't always get a complete look just with one palette. I really like the cream and sugar one, but it doesn't have a good transition color. It has this light ivory shade and then it has this really dark shade. So I'm gonna be using the all matte one, which is called I Love You A Latte and I'm using this just for transitions. And I really love what the first commenter said about these. I think they're good, but they're not like mind-blowingly good. And I think the reason that people were going crazy for them is because they were $3 and I think people probably expected them to be total garbage. And when they weren't, they were just pleasantly surprised. And then I think everybody just kind of ran with that and took it a little bit further than it needed to go. I mean, that's just my personal take. I know there are people who absolutely love these shadows. And again, I think they're good. They're not bad. My biggest gripe is just with the shade selection in some of them, because I feel like I have to go between different palettes. All right, so going back into the cream and sugar palette, I'm gonna put the coppery shade in the middle of my lid towards the outer corner, and I'm gonna put this one in the inner corner. And yeah, these shimmers, like they're so smooth. There's no fallout. Look at that, it's just so pretty. All right, so eye look is done. I just kept it very, very simple, but I think these shadows do a decent job. So I don't agree with the person who said that they suck. I don't think they suck, but I also think they might've been overhyped just because of the price. And I think they just exceeded everybody's expectations because they were so cheap. Next, when it comes to mascara, this was very polarizing. You guys were super opinionated about your mascaras. I think that's one category where people definitely have like strong likes or dislikes. And there were tons of responses for the L'Oreal Telescopic Lift and the Maybelline Sky High. Those were two that were really, really hyped. And a lot of you were let down by them. But I think the biggest one was probably the Essence Lash Princess. So many people really hate this mascara. So um, let me just read you a couple. The first one says, Essence Lash Princess, green and black. Looked gorgeous until I had total panda eyes two hours later. Not good for oilier skins with long lashes. The transfer and smudging is insane. I mean, as a person with dry skin, I will tell you this smudges a lot on me as well. Another person said, for me, it was the Essence Lash Princess mascara. After a few hours, I'd end up with black smudges underneath my eyes. I mean, it was pretty much all about the smudging. This one said, Lash Princess and Essence Mascara in general burns my eyes like crazy and makes them water. I'm terrified of their mascaras, LOL. This next one said, L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara or Essence Lash Princess. Everyone was so obsessed with them, but they both both flake all down my face and smudge so bad I end up looking like a raccoon. This may sound way too dramatic, but I hate them with every fiber of my being. So yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Like people really have strong opinions about this. That's the exact issue that I have with this. And it's unfortunate because I love the way that it makes my lashes look. But I was thinking today I might try something that I read about that I think might help. And that is to seal in a mascara that smudges with a tubing formula. And the reason for that is because tubing formulas are supposed to like coat your lash in that little tube. So once that sets down and dries, nothing should penetrate it. So I've also read that you can set it with a clear mascara and that should work well too. All right, so now I'm just gonna set it with my Hourglass unlocked extensions mascara this is a tubing formula so I'm just gonna go over this quickly and I'll be sure to let you all know in a pinned comment how everything wore but especially this because I'm so curious 
to see if this is going to smudge all over the place because it's pretty much a guarantee when it comes to Lash Princess that I'm going to have raccoon eyes. In a way, it seems kind of annoying to have to use two mascaras, but I think if there's one that you just really love the way it makes your lashes look, then it might make sense to just have something to kind of coat it with. All right, let me just jump back to my brows for a second because I haven't filled them in yet. I just wanna see what this feels like. Oh, gross, it is still really sticky. I don't like that. It really doesn't set down all the way, but I'm gonna have to fill them in anyway, so I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. All right, so it ended up working out okay because I used the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pen. If I were to use a pencil, it never would have stuck to my skin because that wax just made everything feel like so slippery and greasy. And I still don't have confidence that my brows are gonna stay up like this all day. Again, I'll just leave a pinned comment down below and let you know how everything ended up holding up. Let's move on to blush. And there really weren't that many that you all complained about. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not overly critical of blush. I feel like it has to be really, really bad for me to hate it. Most blushes, I think if like they're too dark or too pigmented, you just go a little bit lighter with them. And if they're too light, you can just build them up. I think the formula just doesn't seem as critical as eyeshadow or foundation or something like that. So I'm not super, super picky about blush and it seems like you guys aren't either, but there was one that you guys had some complaints about. So let's see what it was. So this is also from Essence and it's the Pure Nude Baked Blush. So um, one person said, the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blushes, they're nice, but I wasn't wowed. I have other glowy blushes that I prefer more. Another person said, I wanted to love them. I love Milani and Laura Geller baked blushes, but the Essence blushes just did not have the same pigment as the other two brands. I had to build it up a lot and I felt like it faded quickly. I like a really vivid blush, so I figured I'm just not the right consumer for this product, but everyone loves them. Now, this is one that I completely disagree with and maybe it's because I have a lighter skin tone, so if they're not super pigmented, it's not not like a big deal for me, but I do agree that these shades don't really go deep enough. I think those with medium to deeper skin tones might have had a harder time. And the Milani baked blushes, for example, they go a lot deeper in color. So I think there's just more to pick from there, but I really like these. By the way, this is the shade Pretty Peach. I love the little bit of glow that they have. And I like that they're sheer because, you know, having a lighter skin tone blush can definitely be one of those things that you can go overboard super quickly with it. So I like that I can just build it up to what I want. This is a really beautiful color that I feel like I don't use often enough. I'm always using the purple one. That one is definitely my favorite, but I'm loving this peachy one with this eye look and I think it's great for the fall time. And then when it comes to lips, there was one in particular that got so many responses and this broke my heart because this is one of my favorite products. Um, so this one said, Unfortunately for me, it's most lip glosses, especially the Maybelline lifter glosses. They just don't work for me. Sits on top of my lips and doesn't sink in enough to hydrate, and it's super sticky on me. I do much better with most types of balms and lip oils. So I was like, okay, this person just doesn't really like lip glosses, but then they just kept coming. Two people responded and said, I feel the same way about the lifter glosses. I tried way too many because everyone was raving about them. And to me, they're all really gritty and wear off immediately with no hydrating effects. Another person said, bought the lifter gloss when I was in Las Vegas to renew our vows. Tried it luckily the day before. My lips felt numb within seconds, not tingling or anything like you would expect from a plumping gloss. I was pretty anxious and wiped it off immediately and it took a while for the numbing to go away. Now that's interesting because the CoverGirl yummy glosses do that to me, but the Maybelline don't. And I think it must be some sort of allergic reaction because not everybody has that problem. Problem. This one said, I couldn't stand the smell and it was drying and sticky on my lips. I was so disappointed. And then another one said, I had to toss the lifter gloss too, not for me. But from across the room, my husband said, what is that smell and not in a good way? I love the smell of these. They smell like coconut, which to me smells like the beach and summertime. I just, I don't know. I love these. Maybe I'm in the minority, but I find them to be really hydrating. And I love the formula too, because it doesn't have like the plumping tingle, but at the same time, it still plumps up the lines in my lips and makes them look less noticeable. Today, I'm gonna wear the shade Sweetheart, which looks bright orange in the 
the two, but it actually comes out just more of like a peachy color. This is actually one of the new shades that came out in the springtime. They had launched a couple of different colors. I wanna say like six more shades and they were all like really bright and summery colors. I mean, yeah, it is a little bit of like a thicker formula, but I don't feel like it's a sticky gloss. Like when I press my lips together, they don't stick. Like, you know how sometimes it's like that sticky, tacky, almost like your lips are gonna get stuck together. It doesn't feel like that at all. It feels really smooth, but I guess I will kind of agree with the one commenter that said that they sit on top of your lips because I do think that they do that. They're not like a lip oil that's thin that's gonna like sink in more. And I think for that reason, they can kind of wear off quickly, but I just look at it as, you know, it's a lip gloss and I'm not expecting too much longevity out of it. All right guys, so full face is done. Honestly, everything is looking really good right now. So I don't wanna jump to conclusions yet because I feel like, you know, the base products I haven't tried in quite a few years. Same thing with the Essence Mascara. I gave up on that one like a few years ago because it just it was always smudging. So I'll have to let you know, I'm gonna put a pinned comment at the top of the comment section and I'll be sure to give you my thoughts Thoughts on how everything wore throughout the day. But right now, the foundation looks smooth and the concealer too. I mean, nothing is looking cakey, so we'll just have to wait and see. But anyway, guys, I just wanna thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for all of your responses. I really enjoyed reading through all 500 and something of them. And like I said before, if you wanna read through all of the responses as well, um, feel free. I'll just put a link down below. And also, if you have a little bit of extra time and you'd like to check out some more of my videos, I'll just put a playlist right up here that you could check out next. And also, if you're not subscribed, I would love to have you here. Just hit the subscribe button before you go. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye.